Is everybody here? They're uh, ready. You're ready for that mid-afternoon, you know, something or another. Um, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Renee Dobbs. Uh, I have uh, my blog is Magnolia Days. Uh, it's primarily a food blog, and every now and then I stick a little something in there about gardening or wine or something like that. So uh, I've been blogging now for about three and a half years. This is my third word camp. Um, and the second time that I have presented at WordCamp. So what I want to do is find out how many of you here have blogs? A good number. Okay, how many of you who have blogs blog regularly? Ah, a little, a little less, a little less. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so you, you either, how many of you do not have blogs at all but want to start one? Okay, so basically uh, you're here at WordCamp to learn about WordPress, to either get your blog going or to learn more about getting your blog set up and everything. So here you do, you're here, you have this fabulous new uh, blog. So like, there it is, so now what? What's the, what's the first thing that you need to do? And I can tell you that you need to blog. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, it may sound kind of strange, but as you can see when I ask people, you know, how much do you blog regularly, the number of hands went down from how many people have blogs. Um, and basically, first of all, you've spent a tremendous amount of time setting up your blog. You may have spent a tremendous amount of money or a little bit of money to have somebody set that blog up for you. And so you really have some time and investment to getting you to this point which is where it's going to take you and your business on to the next point. So the reason that you need the blog, and it's important, is, is as we just had this wonderful presentation by Jenny Munn about SEO, um, and one of the very important factors about SEO is to get content out there. Because content does a lot of things. It tells Google that you've got something fresh out there. And it also gives people something to read and learn about once they get to your site. So if you don't have fresh content, there's kind of no point in having a blog. You might as well just have a static site that you just have the same thing over and over again. So you really want to do something to keep things fresh out there, to get ideas, to draw people in, uh, to get people to know you're there. So the first thing I can say is blog. Start building content now. Even if your blog is just very rough, very in the start phase, you're in the middle of a design process, it doesn't matter. That content is still going to be there when it turns into this spectacular, the most perfect website ever. But if you don't have the history there and if you don't start um, putting content there, then you're, you know, there's no point. You really just have to start blogging. So then it's like, okay, so I blog and so how often am I supposed to blog? Well, there's a myth out there that if you look up how many times I should blog on the internet, you're going to have a lot of people say, every day. Well, no, not necessarily. Because that might be just a little bit too much for you to handle. And then you wind up being, you know, maybe burnt out about it. You could just be putting up a bunch of stuff just to put stuff out there and it's not really informative. It's not really thoughtful. You really want to do something. Um, you want to put content out there, but you want to do it what is best for you um, and for your audience. And so what I say is, is there is really no rule but to come up with a manageable frequency. And that is just something, a schedule that you can think you can maintain over time. Because I know I have a food blog. And when I first started, I thought, oh my god, I have thousands of recipes and I just can't wait. I need to put all this stuff out there and everything. But, you know, when you start maintaining that all the time, it, it's really difficult to keep up with that schedule. Unless you have a team of people, you have, you're a large company and you have a, a group of people who contribute to the site. But if it's just your site, you're going to need to and do things that fits in where you can provide good things in a reasonable amount of time. And um, so you just kind of have to look through and do something. And then that way, when your audience 
signs up for your newsletter or your RSS feed um, or just you know anything they can rely on the fact that hey maybe you know like for me every Tuesday and Thursday she comes out with a new post or once a week there's something that you know you they come to expect in their inbox that hey here's some more information here's some great information but it keeps you from disappearing from your audience but not overwhelming them with too much now there are exceptions to that let's say you have an entertainment blog well of course entertainment news happens all the time or you have a blog where you do daily coupons you know something like that you, you have to be on top of it and that really kind of is something that you might want to do every day but other than that I would stress more in putting thoughtful content out there so that when somebody does read your post, it's really worthy of them reading it. And so you kind of want to sort of plan things out. And, you know, if you have a plan, then you can work your plan. You know, it's always good to say, okay, and give yourself a goal. Um, a great way to do it is to, to use a calendar. You know, personally, me, my calendar is just a paper calendar I write down the days that I want to do what recipes or the, the things that are going on um, or you might want to use a Google Calendar or something like that there's also if you have um, a company or multiple things or you want to have more of a calendar on your WordPress dashboard there's an editorial calendar plugin and that's where you can manage multiple authors multiple days you can uh, put in a post and say okay I want it to be on this day and then you come up with something else that you need to go ahead of that and you can move it to another day really easy so there's a, a great editorial calendar plugin that uh, is really great for scheduling things out um, and so the thing to do is to try to get content built up ahead of time because you really sort of want to to get things out there and ready to post so that you can maintain that regular schedule let's say you have three or four days where you could just work on posts one right after another instead of just hitting publish 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 you can use that wonderful WordPress feature to schedule posts and say you know let's say that right now I had this crazy you know whatever I've got the ultimate Christmas recipe why, why would I post a recipe for Christmas right now so I could develop it, I could take pictures, write the post, get everything, and then schedule it to be around the 1st of December so that that way I've got that done out of the way and I don't have to think about it. And then when that comes around, I've already got something scheduled for that time frame. So, you know, it's, it's good to, to get the content out there and then to think about, look, look ahead and see what's going on, what's happening in your niche, uh, what's happening in your community and to build that content and get some, get some posts done and get them scheduled. Even if it's a partial post and you can go back and revisit it uh, right beforehand, but it's really good to have something you know, out there so that it gives you a goal and things you can check off on your calendar. So then it's like, all right, okay, so I gotta do all these posts where well, how can I find inspiration? How am I supposed to write all these things? Well, of course, your passion for what you do will help you write. But there's always those writer blocks and things. So I always say, you know, look around the world around you. Um, for example, let's say you're a company that repairs windows. Well, look out, look out a window. You know, come up with um, inspiration for let's say you have you start a new series of things that says looking out the window and you just have different maybe pictures of windows that you fixed and there's something interesting that's outside of that window maybe it's a tree maybe it's a scene maybe it's a truck going by or something like that just you know just to tell a story and then relate it to your business um, or I have this pictures of, of steps there you're walking along, you see these really cool steps, you know, take a picture of it or something, and then let's say you have the, the 10 best steps to fixing your window, or the 10 greatest things for SEO content, you know, everything. Just kind of look around, you know, look, 
you can find lots of inspiration and twists and different things that you can spin your business or your niche or whatever and to come up with something other than just a monotonous sell about whatever's going on in your company right now. And another great thing is events and holidays. Like I said, Christmas for my recipes. Um, you know, maybe there's a certain event that's going on. Hey, WordCamp Atlanta, you're a technology, so you start talking about, you know, you do posts about WordCamp, you were there before, or what you're presenting, you know, coming up. Um, there's niche things in the, in the food world that I'm in. You know, there's upcoming next week is Tater Day. <laughs> so it's fun little things, either, you know, quirky events or national events or holidays or things like that that you could use to find inspiration to write a post on. You know, anything other than the boring old sales post. Um, and then, of course, current news. Um, anything that's going on that is really high in the news right now, you could bump up a post you've got scheduled for next week and, and put it for after that and then write a new post that's something that correlates to your business and something very, you know, powerful that's going on in the news right now. And also projects. Um, if you're, let's say you're a uh, website designer. Uh, and you want to talk about the project, you know, here's what we're working on, you know, step one. Um, just sort of give a little reasoning behind what you're doing. Um, you know, this is, you know, a project we're working on, we're, we're doing this for our clients for this reason. Um, or maybe it's a woodworking project. You know, you, you went out and you found this, this beautiful piece of dead wood laying on the beach and you picked it up and you're, you're going to make something fabulous for your woodworking project. Just any kind of anything that you could have an inspiration for your post. It doesn't always have to be what is actually happening you know, in your business. It's good to tie things outside of your business to your, your posts. Um, so then very important thing to do is try not to be a pushy salesperson. <laughs> is anybody here familiar with Macy's shopping site? Yeah, yeah, Macy's. Well, Macy's has a sale every day, okay? Every single day they have a sale. So you get an envelope in the mail from Macy's, it's like, yay, okay, it's a sale. You get an email from Macy's, it's like, yay, it's a sale. And soon, you have the same thing over and over again, and people just delete or unsubscribe or whatever. So, you know, if you want a sale page, put a sale page that says, hey, oh, by the way, we've got some great offers. You know, click here and, and go, and then keep people on your website to go to see your special offers. You know, get, keep them going, that bounce rate and stuff. So, um, so what do you do? You don't want to you advertise your sale every day in your blog post. So the most very important thing that I think you can do is to tell a story. And there's even a WordPress session, a session at WordCamp today, I think it's either today or tomorrow, that is about telling a story. I highly recommend going to that session because people want to know a story. That's what captivates people. You know, I could, I could say, here's cookies, here's a recipe. Well, what about those cookies? Are they crunchy? Are they chewy? Why did I make those cookies? I had the most incredible failure. My mixer caught on fire when I was making the cookies. You know, something funny, something interesting, something that's going to tell somebody, you know, or even if it's a personal blog, you know, put a little bit of yourself out there, put your voice out there. Uh, because, you know, people, you know, why read dull, boring stuff? You, you really need to have a story. And those stories is what's going to connect you with your audience. Those stories are going to get people in so that they look forward to your next post. You know, wow, I wonder what happened next. You know, I wonder, you know, what's the next thing that's, that's going on? You know, just make it so that you, you bring people in and make them feel like they're a part of your family 
they're your friend, they're connected with you, like you care about them. And, and show a little bit of your expertise. You know, don't, don't be a know-it-all, but you know, just show like, hey, <laughs> I, this, you know, I created this logo. This logo is the best logo in the whole world. It isn't because, you know, hey, I like this color red, it's really pretty. Um, but it could be that I sat with the client and we discussed um, what it is their, you know, our audience is and, and why it is and the story behind that logo and how you took the client's needs and put your expertise with it and made that perfect logo that tells a story about that company with just by somebody looking at it, you know. Anything, anything that shows something uh, that you have your knowledge there, you know, tell them the story in a way that lets them, that, that draws them in. And also help them solve problems. I'm not saying, you know, click here and I'll fix your website for free, but if you give a little bit, of, a tidbit of something, you know, just a little how-to, a little tip, people love tips, they love tips like crazy. You know, if I say, if you want to bake a chocolate cake and you don't want to have that white film around the outside, dust your pan with cocoa powder instead of flour. And so that way the outside of your chocolate cake is, is nice and dark and you don't have this yellow film on the outside. Well, hey, that's a tip. You know, I didn't just give them a cake recipe, I gave them a tip too. So that way, you know, or let's say your muffins always stick in the pan, I give them how, how to or why you know, how you can prevent that from happening. So give them tips, show them some expertise, solve their problems, and, the, and a fantastic way to connect with your community is to answer questions. Your blog comments, the emails that you get, those are perfect blog posts. Somebody, you know, hey, I got this email from my client the other day, and, and, or a customer, or from, Betty Joe in Colorado wanted to know this. It means that, hey, I'm listening to you. I hear you, I'm responding, I'm telling you that, you know, if you take the time to do this, I'll, I'll respond to you. And that way it gets people drawn in and they'll, they might want to, you know, send you questions or ask you questions or hire you or see that, hey, this is a, this is a helpful person. This is somebody that can help me. So this is, you know, it's just really great. And, and I can only say that it's, it's so very important to connect with your customers on that emotional level. People like to be helped. People want to learn things. People want to read stories. If people didn't want to read stories, there wouldn't be a book sold ever. So, <laughs> so keep that all in mind. When you're, when you're doing your blog posts and putting that content out there that it isn't all about those keywords, it's filtering in those words into that copy that people read and draw them in and make them want to come back and visit you and, or to, so that they get more information from you and subscribe to your newsletter and subscribe to your feed and follow you on social media because there's something interesting about you. So like I said, Try to, you know, nobody cares that y'all just repainted your company's bathroom, you know. And don't, don't put boring news out there about your company. You know, put exciting things out there. Um, and like I said, have another page where you can say, go here for offers. And that benefits both, you know, your uh, visit time and gets people more interested to go see those offers and see what you have to say. And of course, a picture is worth a thousand words. I can't express enough about how much people love pictures. If you go to a website and you get to a page and all you see is words, I think people cross over. Try to find photographs that portray the message that you're wanting to give in your post. Make it visual, make it something that connects. That earlier slide I had about stairs. If you're doing something that says steps to 
reach your goal, have a picture of steps there. You know, do something to make it so that the first time they come there, they see something that really gives a message about um, what it is that you're trying to say. Um, so there's places to find photos. I know there was a session earlier uh, Tom Tortorici had uh, about uh, photos for your website, and I believe there's another uh, session later uh, today or tomorrow also about great photography for your website. And, and, those, and you can also find photos on uh, different places. There's photo sites, there's Flickr and all of that. Or you can create your own images. Creating images doesn't always mean taking a photo. You could create an infographic, and those are really, really, really popular. Um, you could create just a little, uh, you know, basic little image of something. Um, and then videos. Videos are incredibly, incredibly hot right now. Um, put a little 15 second video on your blog, upload it to Facebook, upload it to Instagram. Um, if you have that little tip, like I said, dusting the pan with cocoa, I, you know, one of my goals is to do more of those little tips or, and start videos on mine, but it would be good just to show a quick little, you know, how-to. Or your woodworking project, you know, which, how do you select the right piece of uh, thing to put in your, your saw? You know, just something out there, a little, a little video. Uh, people love them, and it will keep people on your website, too. Um, and of course, with all things blogging and all things, you know, all that stuff, you need to keep it legal. <laughs> there are legalities that are involved in blogging. Um, first off, very, very important, those photos and those videos and those images and even words all fall under copyright laws. Never, ever, 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 ever pull and use somebody else's images without permission or without buying them. Uh, and never just copy their content from their blog post and put it on your blog post. Because these days there are, um, there are actually law firms that are starting to come up right now and people that are actually looking for people who are using other people's images and lawsuits are going out like crazy. There's even been a lawsuit for $120,000 just for one photo. So you really, really, really have to be careful and protect yourself and make sure that you just don't do your regular Google image search and say, oh, that's great, download it and put it up onto your blog site. Getty Images is notorious these days. They've, I think they have like a generic $500 invoice that they'll send to you if they find you're using one of their images. So it's really, really important that you make sure that whatever you put on your blog in the image, the video, and the text is all legal and you're not copying somebody else's work or using somebody else's work. So. It's not going to do you a whole lot of good to spend all this money and spend all this time to build a blog and then next thing you know, all the money and investment you've put into it, you're hiring a lawyer uh, to, to take care of lawsuits for things that might be on your blog. So you, you really need to be careful about that. Um, can't stress that enough. Other things that you need to do is you need to disclose information. Um, sponsored posts. I, I, I have a lot of sponsored posts. Um, a food company says, hey, I'll pay you $500 to, to write about this, our, our product. Well, I, I need to put it in there. This is a post sponsored by this company to let people know that I receive money in order to, for, for that post. And it's not just that, it's also free product. Hey, I, you know. People, you know, I've gotten boxes of produce before, and if I use that produce in, in my post, I will put in there, this post, this 
I received a box of produce at no charge from X company. Uh, I was under no obligations to write a post, but I still put it in there because legally I need to say that some company gave me something, money or otherwise, gave me something to make that post happen. So that way you're covered and, and the FTC is, uh, you know, they, they really want you to follow those uh, Federal Trade Commission guidelines. So um, the other things that you need to disclose is affiliate links. I make money off of Amazon. Can anybody else make money off of Amazon? Yay. So when you put a link that I said, hey, this is the greatest cookbook ever. I, I received this cookbook from, you know, to review. I let them know that I received it for free. And then this is where you can buy it. And I put a link to it and I say, Amazon affiliate link in parentheses beside it. I'll, you have to put, anytime you put an affiliate link in there, you need to tell people that those are affiliate links so that that way you are covered um, because you are earning money from people clicking on those links. So if you use Amazon Associates, if you're a, um, let's say you are uh, earn money for selling web hosting, you have a little ad on the side that says, you know, hosted by um, SiteGround, and people click on that and they, they get hosting and you earn money from it, you really need to disclose on your website that that is uh, an affiliate link. And then paid links are not exactly what you really want to do. And Jenny sort of explained that for people to, you know, if you do have somebody gives you money just to put a link in there, but you really need to disclose that you were given money to have that link in there. Google really frowns upon paid links and it's also de um, deceiving to your readers if you don't have something in there that, that says, you know, hey, I was, I was paid for this. Um, the other thing uh, that kind of goes along with keeping it legal is to give credit, okay? I go to this site and I see this amazing, amazing thing this recipe and I just can't, I just, I love it. It's the best thing in the world, but instead of it being one thing, I want to switch something out and all that. I can give credit to that person that says, hey, this recipe was inspired by this one on this site. You know, always give credit where you have inspiration. If you use someone's photo and they give you permission to use it, it's really good to, you know, photo courtesy of and give a person, you know, that credit. It's sort of that, you know, hey, thank you. <laughs> it's nice to say thank you and to build your community that way. Um, and of course, the other things going with the under legal is you definitely don't want to fringe upon any trademark laws. So keep trademarks um, in mind. And you do not want to cause yourself to be put, uh, given something for, you don't want to be liable for anything. So be sure that you have facts and be sure that you, you know, everything that you portray because you definitely don't want to get a libel lawsuit. Um, and also an extremely, extremely important thing is privacy. When somebody has a form and they give you your email address and your phone number, or if you have an e-commerce site and you have the credit card information, you need to do everything you can possible to ensure that those that all that private information stays private. So do whatever you have to do to guarantee and ensure that the visitors that come to you and give you that valuable information that you're not giving it out to, to someone else or putting it in a place where someone else can find it. Uh, last thing you need is to be giving out people's financial information or even you know email lists or anything like that so make sure that you have you know take care of people's privacy so then you've you've written your blog post you got images you got inspiration um, so what next well nobody really knows you're out there unless you tell them <laughs> you can write blog posts till you're blue in the face 
Um, you might have some good SEO on there and people could, you know, come visit your website after you've built up this nice SEO and you get up into the rankings. But in order to really kind of let people know about your blog posts that you've masterfully done and done everything right and it's so perfect, and that is to be a part of a community. Be a good neighbor. Um, and in that neighbor, you build your own community with your readers and your newsletters and your posts. And you also have a community of other people, your peers. Um, and then to let people know about your posts and your company and all that, it's really important these days to be active uh, on social media. And I say active because there's a lot of people who sign up, they do that automatic thing where I do a blog post and it automatically publish, publishes to Facebook and it automatically publishes Twitter and it's like, okay, that's it. Well, no, you really need to, to find which social media channel or channels um, are the most relevant to what your business is and concentrate on those and be active. You know, talk to people you know, communicate with people on that site, tweet out to people, you know, answer people's tweets, um, you know, find other people and, you know, tweet to them. Um, just make sure that you interact and if somebody sends you a question or replies or tweets to you, you know, just eat, thank them. They retweeted something of yours, well, thank, you know, thank, thank you for that. I hope you have a fabulous day or how can I help you or, or anything like that. And it's really a good idea not to just share your own stuff. You're not the most important thing in the world. What you want to do is make sure that you're an authority on a subject. So if you have, let's say, a website design company, you're not the only website design company out there, and you don't have all the greatest ideas. And if company XYZ has this awesome post about something about web design, share it. Share it, share, share, share. Share about five things of somebody else's for one thing of yours. Um, and that way it kind of shows that you're relevant in the industry, um, that you want to give information out to your, your people. And then people start seeing that and start seeing, hey, they don't just know about them, they know about the whole thing. And so that will get attention to you and to your blog. And and you don't always have to just do those helpful tips and hints on your blog itself. You can put a great tip in a tweet. You can do a Facebook post and you know, do a, a mini blog, you know, something on Instagram, just something you know, that just, you know, hey, you know, somebody, you, you can search Twitter uh, for people asking questions. There's ways you can do a search uh, looking for a question, a question mark and all that and you can do that and then you can reply and say, hey, try this. You know, make yourself an authority and make yourself be so that someone is approachable to you out there on social media. And then also it's good to have a newsletter or at least a feed of your posts um, and that way that, that people know, you know, communication is coming to them. And so the other thing is, is you want to join communities. There are some amazing communities on Facebook and Google Plus. Um, I know me being a food blogger, I have, I'm a part of several food blogging communities and it's not just about cooking, it's about website design, it's about SEO. People have questions, what's your hosting provider? Which WordPress theme do you use? Uh, how do you, you know, format your recipes and, and all this stuff? You will get, when you find that you're in a community of your niche, then people will start helping each other and offering things. And you can ask questions and it becomes a place of a resource. It's, it's kind of like an ongoing conference. So, you know, join and be active in those communities because Doing that also, if you can contribute to that community, they see you as that authority person and they go, hey, what's, wh who are they? And they start looking you up and they might find your website and then you might have another reader. You might have another follower. You might have a new customer. So it's important to just kind of, like I said, try, you know, it's hard to do all of the social media sites, 
pick the, pick, you know, if you just have to pick one, pick one that's your strongest and, and do that. Um, there's also forums, online forums that are really great. Look for forums that is in your um, business. And then of course there's meetups, there's WordPress meetups, uh, lots of them in Atlanta and different ones around the country. There's conferences like this. <laughs> um, and so just like here, you learn things in the sessions, but you also learn things out there in the hallway in the happiness bar and when you're out at dinner and the after party and you talk to people and you get to know people, that's what all those communities is about. Be a part of a community, build a community, and that gets the information out there about your website and your blog. And that's it. <laughs> And that's where you can find me. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about blogging? Yes. Could you maybe tell me a little bit about Google Plus? I've kind of seen it. I, 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 uh, how does it work? How does it compare to Google Plus? Uh, do you use it? Yes, I do use it. Uh, right now, well, Google Plus is really, it's just another social media platform. It's, it's, no, it's, it's Google's version of Facebook. You've got your stream. You've got communities. Um, it's really, um, it's easier to get to the world on Google Plus because you don't have the so much privacy restrictions and all that like on Facebook. Like Facebook right now, um, you have your personal profile, which you're not supposed to use for your business, but then you have your business page, and right now business pages on Facebook really suck as far as getting exposure out there on Facebook. When you put something out on Google Plus, more it, you can get more people to see it and, and there are the same communities and stuff. Now what Google Plus is currently working on and soon they're going to separate, um, they're going to have streams and they're going to have photos. So um, the streams part will still be more like Google Plus and the photos thing will be more you know, just photo centric where you just post photos and all that. But it's just another social media outlet to explore and you just have to do like every, everything else if you want. Is the same material on your site as you put on Google Plus? Or? Yes, I do. Every time I do a blog post, I share, I tweet it multiple times. Um, I put on my Facebook page, um, Instagram, Pinterest, Google Plus, uh, a link which will go into streams. A photo which will go into Google Photos. I'm more, I'm a kind of a social media nut. So um, it's, it's just another platform. Yes? Um, I don't auto post anything. I manually post, I, you know, manually do the tweets in the morning. I have buffer and I set up, you know, tweets to go throughout the day and each one is worded a little different. And then I hop on over to Facebook and I'll put something, I word it just a little bit different so that it's not the same thing across all channels. Do you use anything to manage all your social media? Or do you do it all really separately? Uh, yes and yes. Um, I have Hootsuite that manages a lot of things, but it doesn't connect to everything. You can't post to Pinterest from uh, Hootsuite and you can't do your personal profile from Hootsuite either. So I don't know yet of one that will do everything, everything, and Instagram and all of that stuff, but hopefully one day that'll come soon. So I, I try to use as many social media tools as I can to condense it, um, but I, you still have to kind of visit each one and, and check on things, yeah. Yes? Uh, do you blog at all on LinkedIn? Obviously there's more of a consumer rather than a Yes. LinkedIn is the only one that I'm not on right, well, because I personally am not selling anything. Um, my blog um, is, of course, primarily a food blog, a little gardening and all that stuff. And what I have actually earned money on is things that I've done because of my blog, but I'm not looking, I'm not selling, certain, you know, I'm not selling anything and all that, so I just have never really seen the need for me to be on on LinkedIn, <laughs> other than to say, hey, look at my recipe today, you know. <laughs> yes? Um, I'm, I'm interested in getting some music on my website that's public domain in most countries, but I'm not sure when public domain is often used. Can you block a country from coming to your blog? 
Yes? Repeat the questions, please. Um, she was saying that she has uh, some things that she is sure is public domain in some countries, but not all countries. And if you can block countries from seeing your website. And I'm very sure that if you go to the happiness bar, somebody there could probably help you with, you know, blocking countries and all of that from, from visiting your site. I'm, I do not have that expertise, but I'm absolutely certain that somebody in this building can help you with that. <laughs> yes. The first step, blog, add that new post. <laughs> right up there, go into WordPress, see where it says post, and then click add new. <laughs> just do a post, add new post. Just get them out there, just start blogging. I'm sorry, go ahead. I work directly, yeah. Um, both, I reach out to them and they reach out to me. For sponsored posts, do I work with a middleman or do I contact them directly or whatever? And for my sponsored posts, um, they contact me and if there's a company that I'm interested in working in, I'll contact them. If I say, hey, King Arthur Flower, I love your flower, you know, can we work something out? I'd like to be an ambassador for you, you know, I reach out. I reach out to them too. Do these sponsors send you 1099s? Yes, they do. You report all the taxes. Oh yes, you report everything. So it's, not, it's not free. It, right? No, it's not free. No, it's not free money. It's income. I would say it was you're past the first year. And there's a lot of factors to that because with it being a food blog and having somebody who's never taken a picture in their life other than, you know, whatever, there's a lot of things that go along with a food blog that gets people attention to it. And one of those is half decent photos <laughs> and stuff like that. And then of course, getting the content out there and when people do recipe searches and making sure you've got the good SEO. So if they're looking for, peanut butter chocolate chip cookies, they'll find your peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. But, and so unless I had a lot of things going out there and a lot of posts, then Google wouldn't see me as being authority on recipes and cooking and cookies and all that stuff. So it, that kind of helps get up. And then the more you get up in searches and the more active you are on social media and your niche and all that, then brands and sponsors and all of that start noticing you too. Um, I, I have guest posts on my blog, usually when I'm going on vacation or something, like I went last October, I went to Germany for two weeks, so I had a bunch of my food blogger friends do some posts and some recipes so that they, I could put them on my blog and that way I could focus on being on vacation and not having to do all that beforehand and all that, so I have guest posts from basically friends and peers, but I just don't let Joe Blow who I don't know do a guest post on, on my site because most of those just want to have those links to go to. They're just trying to build links. Yeah. What about blogs where you actually allow the actual to be seen in the foreground that they've generated? Do you allow that? And do you um, what I what I will allow is you can um, use one of my photos and, and like a link that says, hey, you know, check out these, these, these cookies are awesome. Go here for this recipe and they can put a link to the recipe. And then there are some sites where you can do the, the photo and the, the ingredients, but not everything. So they still have to come to my site to get the whole how to make it sort of thing. So it's, it's you know, you don't want to give your full stuff to somebody else because that way, they have no reason to come see you. Can you tell if Google through the analytics at all if your blog is too long for that day? Can you, is there a trend? Because sometimes I, I have a couple of subscriptions and it's amazing how long some of the bloggers go on and on and on. And I'm so confused about work. 
Yeah. No, because uh, I struggle enough with writing. I doubt I could just go on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> um, but I suggest that if you are going to have a very long post, that you should break it up. You know, part one, part two, part three. Plus, it gives that incentive for somebody to keep looking for part two and part three. So if you do have a whole bunch of information, then divide it up into to tasks that, that gives somebody a little piece of something, but they want the next thing and then they oh yeah that's great okay I can wait to see the next thing so and I've even done that with recipes I've had this great big massive recipe but in order to get to that recipe you have to make the potato salad part of it and you have to make the dressing part of it and you have to make something else part of it and then when you do all those together you can I can link and say to make this big thing go here to make this and this and this and then that way I've got part one, part two, part three and the final thing. Any kind of people's attention span a yeah. little bit ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Is there a formula or is it just like um, I would have to say that the most important thing is to try your best to capture their attention in that first paragraph um, and then go into detail later. Well, that's where the sponsored posts and all that came in. My, um, and I also, because of blogging, I met up with some people and we uh, have the Sunday Supper Movement, uh, which is, um, we do campaigns and all that for brands and all, and we, um, tr it's kind of like a PR firm in a way. So my blogging and being in the community met up with somebody else and we, started this business and that business gets us and also other bloggers paid to do these posts to work for these brands and then because of my blogging I mean I just seriously I started it for fun out of just because I love I love food you know um, and then all the these these offers started coming in uh, and so you know and then other people do it they get photography gigs they get recipe writing gigs they ghost write for coast cookbooks. I mean, just all kinds of different things can branch off uh, from what you're doing that isn't specifically what you're doing. All right, so I think, yep, five minutes till four, so I better clear out and so the next person can come in. I'm available here, I'm an organizer, I'm at the front desk and, yeah. Thank you.